Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on when you're, where you're uh, tuning in from. Uh, welcome to the pre-meeting webinar for the Beyond the Farm Bill uh, National Network Meeting, which will be taking place next week, next Monday, Monday and Tuesday, March 24th, 25th, at the Marquette Hotel in Minneapolis. This webinar is put on by Institute for Agri the Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy. Uh, my name is Pete Huff. I'm the Director of Food Systems here at the Institute, and I'm joined on this webinar by my colleagues, uh, Ben Williston, who's the Vice President for Program, and Dr. Jody Chappelle, who is the Director for Agroecology and Agriculture Policy. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Institute for Agriculture, uh, Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy, um, we're a nonprofit that's based in Minneapolis. Uh, it's been founded, we were founded in 1986, and we work uh, locally and globally at the intersection of policy and practice to ensure fair and sustainable food, farm, and trade systems. So this goal of the, the webinar today, which will we'll run until about 1.45, uh, is to give you the overview of the Beyond the Farm Bill project and this national network meeting that's happening next week. Also, we've dedicated some time at the end of the webinar to hear your questions, comments, suggestions about the project, uh, and we hope that it will be an interactive experience rather than us just talking. So please feel free to contribute uh, with your questions, uh, feedback, and comments. So for the structure of the webinar here today, uh, we'll run through the following topics uh, before handing the microphone over to you, so to speak, to hear that feedback. Um, you'll be muted throughout the, throughout the whole of the presentation now, but you can ask your questions via the toolbar on your screen. There should be a box there where you can type in your questions, and we'll keep track of those and respond to them after the end of the presentation. Um, if you're having trouble with, the, with your webinar, uh, you can also ask for help via that question box, and Catherine will, will help you sort out uh, any issues you might be having. Um, also, if you prefer, you can switch your computer microphone uh, or speaker to a telephone to listen in. Um, to phone in, you can click on the audio panel in your toolbar and select the telephone button. This information, uh, the information you'll need to phone in will appear on that screen um, if, you, if you prefer that. Um, so, like I said, we're hoping to hear your voice during the discussion uh, portion of the webinar. You can raise your hand via the toolbar uh, and Catherine will unmute you so that you can um, actually speak in your own words uh, and share your questions, comments, and feedback. Um, we do ask that you please um, say your name and, and who you're, uh, the organization or affiliation that you might be working from. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing your, your thoughts and comments on Beyond the Farm Bill. So now I'll hand it over to Ben Lewiston, who will give us a bit of a background um, on Beyond the Farm Bill um, and where it came from. Ben, do we have you there? Okay. Ben, can you hear us? Okay, Ben, if you can unmute yourself. Sorry, everybody, we're having a bit of a technical issue here. Okay. So while we're waiting for Ben, I'll, I'll jump in here and, and cover this slide that we're talking about. Um, so Beyond the Farm Bill is a, a project that's been uh, several years in the works um, at, Inst at the Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy. Um, specifically, um, this work began when we didn't have a Farm Bill. And so now that we have one that's been officially signed, uh, we have uh, set up some work to uh, set up this project to essentially think beyond that Farm Bill and some of the limitations that might come with it. Uh, we acknowledge the fact that there's a lot of really, there's been a lot of work that's gone into um, the, the Farm Bill and groups that have been actively engaged with that along with IETP over the years. Uh, but really the, the idea came from the fact that we need to um, look for food and agriculture policy conversations that are outside of Washington and that Farm Bill debate um, because unfortunately uh, sometimes they don't always reflect all the various interests and needs that, come, uh, that need to be reflected in a policy platform that addresses food and agriculture. Um, I'm not sure if Ben is tuned in yet, but I might yeah, pass it. I I think I'm on. Am I yeah, on? You're there. Okay. I really apologize. I've done a lot of webinars, and I just 
I think maybe got a little overconfident in my ability to handle the, <laughs> the mute and unmute. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, I just want to build a little bit on what Pete was saying is that we've, we've had a lot of conversations with people, many of you, I know I have personally, and Pete has, and Jahi, and um, a big part of the, the sense is that there's just a huge disconnect between the policy arena and a lot of the fights that we're engaged in and the need for more transformative change in the food and agriculture system. The, in other words, the need is, is way bigger much more serious and urgent than the the what is happening in the policy arena. It's the policy arena is not up to the task. Basically, if we're dealing with uh, sort of the economic challenges around farming, whether it's credit or access to land or access to markets, uh, health issues in our food system, justice issues in our food system, um, and sort of environmental uh, and climate challenges. And so um, there, there seems to be a lot of agreement among uh, uh, people we talk to, um, and many of the people who are coming to this meeting, that this is in fact the case, and that uh, a, mono, a lot of the, the big challenges we face, sort of the policy ways to address that are not going to come from Washington, and that we need to be a little bit more proactive in setting an agenda. Um, I think another part of it is, we need to be more creative in finding ways to work together um, across different aspects of the food and ag system. So many of you are part of different coalitions right now that are very effective, and IETP is, is part of many. Um, but they have sort of a narrow focus, and often they're not able to talk to each other and strategize together on the higher level things that we want to accomplish. So that's another. Uh, a need that we identified and, and are hoping to get to uh, at this meeting. I think the other thing, of course, is that there is a lot of energy um, and innovation happening outside of Washington um, for changing the food and agriculture system. There's a lot of things happening on the ground, regional level, state level. Um, and how can we tap into that in a better way uh, and, and think together about that and identify some of the things that are working and some of the things that aren't working. So this is sort of the, the thinking behind this gathering and this initiative. Um, we also want to acknowledge that um, these type of discussions have happened in the past. That was something that came up again and again talking to people. Um, of course, the challenges of the economics around farming and uh, some of the challenges around environmental conservation. Uh, justice in the in the food plate in the workplace, whether it's throughout the food system or outside the food system, these are these are challenges that our society has been dealing with for a long time. Um, so they're tough and they're difficult. Um, so what makes me feel like right now we do have a different time, though it's a different moment in time. The farm bill has just passed. Um, we do have all this activity at the local regional level. There is greater awareness about things like climate change, the link between health and food, uh, a push for more local-oriented economies broadly, including the food system. Um, so it's a, it's a different point in time, and it's an opportunity to try to do things differently, and that's what we're excited about it. Um, I guess the last thing I'd add is that these type of conversations among civil society groups or NGOs or advocacy groups um, it's also happening in other countries, and um, so Canada and Australia just went through a really lengthy, deep process, uh, groups there um, focused around food sovereignty and coming up with a common policy agenda. Um, Europe also has their own sort of network of NGOs working around the common agricultural policy, which is basically their farm bill. Um, and so, every, of course, every country in the context is different. But um, I think that another way to think about this is, you know, this is part of, of a series of conversations that are taking place in different parts of the world and within the United States about what do we do to meet the challenges that, that we're facing. Um, so I'm going to pass it on to Pete now to talk a little bit about some of the principles that, um, that are grounding this discussion. Great. Thanks, Ben. Um, so again, this is Pete back, and just wanted to follow on from what Ben was talking about around some of the principles that Beyond the Farm Bill is really built on. 
Now, the seven principles that are on the screen now, um, they're nothing new, I'm sure, to any of you. Um, they're very basic ideas, uh, but it doesn't make them any less true or less of a priority. Um, these are principles that came up over and over again in the various conversations we've had with people around this idea, as well as through the history of IATP's work uh, and recognizing um, that those really you know, should establish the foundation for any conversations and work that we do around the topic. So these are kind of the several key themes that have come up for us as the priorities um, for what we see as necessary for creating that food and agriculture, for any food and agriculture policy. Um, and these are the Beyond the Farm Bill principles, and they have their nice uh, logos there to make them uh, attractive and appealing. Um, they really create the basis in our minds for balancing all the diverse interests in this area of work um, and the specific policy approaches that go along with them. Um, we realize that not only does each individual principle have policy uh, work and priorities that need to come out um, within that topic, but also realizing that all these principles share relationships to each other um, and that they cannot exist in isolation. And by having relationships amongst themselves and looking for those intersections uh, and the policies that might uh, create greater impact and efficiency, um, that's really what Beyond the Farm Bill is all about. It's about looking for those intersections and looking for those relationships amongst these principles. And that is what we see as the way to establish common ground, um, not only on a policy level, but also in the relationships between the groups that are doing this work. Uh, as we all know, um, you know, we're always short on time and resources, and we have a lot of work to get done in a short period of time. So looking for ways that we can work together better um, is really where these principles come into play. And it helps us um, check our work as well to make sure that we're um, being really having a wide view and really trying to um, include as many aspects as possible in our thinking. So on this level is the National Network Meeting, which is what is underpinned by these Beyond the Farm Bill principles. So that these principles create the structure for the meeting, um, which is essentially bringing together um, about, 25, or about 75 representatives, excuse me, from over 50 organizations from around the country. So it's going to be kind of the kickoff. It's the beginning of the beyond is the way that we've been phrasing it. Um, so again, it's next Monday and Tuesday here in Minneapolis, so we're hoping for some nice weather. A little bit of snow on the ground now, so um, <laughs> that might be what you, what you might be walking into. Um, the three objectives that we've outlined for the network meeting are listed on the screen. The priorities for us is first and foremost is building the relationships amongst the people and the organizations that will be there and looking for those policy intersection conversations of how different areas of work that may be isolated um, can come together and can define that common ground and to think about that from a policy context. The second key objective and priority for us is really understanding the policy challenges. As Ben mentioned, the topics that we're talking about are ones that have been dealt with uh, throughout the course of, of, of human existence. They are, they're big topics that are as old as agriculture. And we realize that there's some challenges there, so we want to kind of get an understanding and have a common understanding about some of those challenges. More importantly, coming out of that, we want to start thinking about what is this shared action blueprint for policy? You know, where are some of the areas that we feel like, as a, a group, we can work together in different ways um, to really leverage some change on the local, regional, national, and ideally international level, um, considering what Ben discussed about, or mentioned about some of the other efforts that are happening in Europe, Canada, and other places. The third element for us that's really important out of this meeting next week is to develop an approach for moving forward together in an equitable way to achieve some strategic impact. We want to find a process and some agreements that actually create tools and pathways for working together to achieve some impactful change. And we want to do that in a way that balances the voices in the room. So it's not just the predominant voices that normally are heard, but it really reaches out to as many different voices as possible um, from around the country, from around the different topics, um, and also from the policy and grassroots side of things. So within that meeting structure, we have two days, and um, we've, we've set things up um, to really focus on discussion and collaboration. So as you can see, this is a, a very basic breakdown. If you've registered, you've received a more detailed um, agenda, and we'll have one coming out with some speakers, specific speakers, uh, here in the next day or so. So as you can see on the first day, that will set the framework with speakers and panelists sharing their perspectives on policy challenges and opportunities from their perspective, from their organizations and their work, be it on the ground or more on the policy level. And the idea is to generate topics for the large, larger and smaller group discussions. 
Uh, again, we'll have a lot of forums of many different sizes and many different approaches for people to participate in. So hopefully we'll gather as many ideas as possible. And through this process, we hope to start building those relationships amongst the attendees um, and also build a list of these kind of key topics and themes that we really want to discuss more fully and we want to get into in greater depth on policy uh, on the second day of the meeting. So on that day, too, we'll feature, um, first and foremost, we'll have a keynote speaker from uh, ARC 2020, um, Samuel. He will be coming in and sharing their experience um, in the European Union, um, and which is essentially ARC 2020 is a collection of civil society groups that are dedicated to shifting the EU common agriculture policy. They do that through innovative, transparent, and inclusive processes and really have uh, our leader in that, in that capacity. So Samuel's uh, presentation will most certainly be very enlightening for uh, areas where we might be able to, to learn from some of the other processes. The latter part of that day, we'll work together to develop a schedule for the rest of the day. And we'll do this by identifying the issues that the group themselves, the individuals, feel are the most important. And this will be done through an unconference or open source process, which might be new to some people. Others might be very familiar with it. Um, the idea is to really crowd source and crowd generate um, what we want to talk about and how we want to talk about it in terms of prioritization. And we'll focus on first steps in building momentum and we'll also focus on strategies and resources for working together on the long term. So that'll be a much more dynamic um, and uh, potentially highly interactive experience. We'll finish the second day with an open forum and that'll be an opportunity to generate just some broad discussion and observations about what what does the group want Beyond the Farm Bill to become? Uh, what's the appropriate role, the appropriate function, and how do groups want to come into that um, on a level of leadership, on a level of participation, and a level of ownership? And we want to make sure um, that that's something that we all can come to an agreement on before we finish that second day of the meeting. So overall, it'll be a very interactive two days. A lot of great groups will be there, um, and we have that list that we've distributed out, uh, with, uh, and we'll be sending an updated one here by the end of the week as well. So now that we've covered the National Network meeting, I um, wanted to pass it over to uh, Jockey, who's going to share a little bit more about how we're framing that meeting uh, and some of the agreements and priorities for us. Jockey? Uh, thanks, Pete. Um, can you hear me or can you guys hear me, organizers? Yes. Ah, okay, great. Um, so there's... Uh, a lot here, I'm not necessarily going to go completely in order, but uh, a recording of this webinar will be available afterwards, I believe. Um, but uh, so building on what, what Pete and Ben have said, uh, you know, we're really excited about this uh, initiative. It is an initiative for us, but we realize that um, you know, this is the start of a longer conversation. And what we hope to build is an ongoing space uh, for this kind of work. Um, and we realize as well that this builds on, hopefully, conversations that have been going on among your groups, among a lot of existing networks. Uh, we personally, as ITP, have been participating in National Sustainable Ag Coalition, in uh, the GOAT Coalition that can interact together, and there's lots of other ones, uh, both regional, local, national, that are existing. And what we want to do is to try and bring these together. Um, there's uh, two authors, Hart and Negri, who wrote about sort of international movements and change, and they argued that the challenge before us right now is to have greater democracy within our movements, uh, as well as targeting democracy as a result of the movements. And so in terms of that, we're trying to make sure that everyone that has some kind of stake in these principles is at the table, but we recognize that we haven't gotten them all. We start from a certain history from a certain place, and this is just the first pass, the beginning of the conversation. So we want to begin this conversation, but if there's groups that are missing, groups that we have heard of or that we haven't heard of, suggestions, we want to keep building from here to expand out and encompass uh, as many voices as possible. Um, and in that, that's, I think, the usefulness of those principles. You know, it does come from conversation and our experiences, and I think and, and hope that this is something that pretty much everyone can sign on to. And building from that, we can figure out what we ought to be done and figure out what kind of policies ought to be in place, rather than sort of constraining ourselves to what can we get, uh, really design from the ground up what works for people, what works for these different groups. And I think that that has uh, uh, two uh, elements there. I, mean, I think one that builds that internal democracy, but I think also in terms of our theory of change, that is what 
really will enable some real change to happen is that if we can all with, you know, I don't want to say exactly one voice, but we can figure out where we all agree and say the same things in the same language when we do agree. That's much more powerful than all of us saying the same thing but in slightly different ways. Um, and so that sort of goes to the, the, it takes a village, you know, we're not approaching this in terms of the sort of traditional big tent, which sort of forces everyone to, you know, be in the same tent, you know, forces certain uh, conformity. We're thinking of more of a village of tents, so we all have our different focuses, our different abilities, our different histories, and we want to make sure that we're all talking, that we're a village among these different tents. And um, the way I tend to think about it is how powerful it would be if we have different groups, if we have a conservation group that maybe is you know, talking to the media or policymaker, and they say, well, what's the most important thing in the food system? And they say, okay, well, these are our priorities for pollinator habitat, but it's also really key that you know, farm labor and farm owners uh, have protections and equity, and these are sort of two or three things that we think are really important in those terms. And these are some partners or some groups that we think really have got it right. You know, we agree on that, that part of their agenda. You really have to talk to them if you want the whole picture of what needs to be done. Um, and I think if we can all create that space uh, and have that common language and common understanding of sort of what, who's in what tent and what their expertise is, that would be a much stronger uh, base. And I think part of the challenge that other networks, that, or other attempts to do this have run into is that this, again, requires that sort of internal democracy. It requires a lot of hands, and it requires figuring out who's going to get what support to do what, you know, how, we, how can we share the resources, how we can share logistics. Um, at IATP, we hope to try and use this uh, meeting to create a space, but we want to be a space where everyone can come in and if they view it as something useful, participate. And so we really are open to thinking about how to best do that going forward and, and what should be done. I'll return to that in a little bit. Um, in terms of the key agreements, this is sort of the ground rules that we're thinking of how we as ITP will approach it. And we hope that participants will come in in terms of making sure to acknowledge that there has been work um, that's already been done, a lot of great uh, movement and change. And so trying to build on what we know of existing dialogues and think where we need to ask some further people who've been working on that to get outside of our normal issue zones and um, sort of that, that point about finding common ground, you know, the underlying principles and what we all agree on. And we don't want to force everyone to agree on everything. We know that's not going to happen, but rather do the hard work of figuring out where we agree and where we disagree so that when there are inevitable attempts uh, to undermine different, uh, uh, you know, different structures, if there's backlashes, if we've already worked out our differences and accepted where we disagree and, and have a knowledge of it, it's a lot harder to divide us if we do come together in certain positions. If we know and can say, yeah, well, that's not where we agree, but this is the core thing that we think should get done. And it's also better that in curiosity and learning more about other groups. And like I say, these are the ground rules we hope to go into it with, it, but it's very much what we want to hold ourselves to uh, in terms of thinking about how to approach this to you know, definitely listen to a lot of other groups. Um, and then also just a, a, a one way to think about this meeting is getting big to get small. We want to try and get this big conversation, connect various networks in order to then perhaps have maybe smaller uh, groups or continued conversations in other groups, but with knowledge of what the big scope is and maybe some more language in common. So that goes sort of the, that goes to the strategic value. Uh, what we see in this, um, like I say, there there are of course many great conversations going on, and I think that that conversation, the new part of it, is to try and develop what the shared uh, elements are, develop shared language, and from that shared language, develop some shared policy. You know, a, a platform that is backed by uh, work from the ground up, backed from all these different stakeholders, and really fully. Uh, buys in and listens to and understands the perspectives from a lot of different areas. Um, and again, we think that what's novel about this somewhat um, is trying to draw this really broad net across you know, conservation, workers, eaters, healthy food, fair wages, local ownership, trying to get all of this together um, and build a relationship so that we can, like I said, to figure out the hard choices about how we pursue what resources and how we can fund different initiatives and build capacity in different groups maybe to take this on. I mean, one thing I hear again and again talking about other groups is that everyone seems to agree that these ideas are great, but for groups that's primary work might be the grassroots uh, element, where's the time and bandwidth 
to engage in this uh, or to have another conference call that you might already have a bunch. So we hope to really start strategizing on how to be much more deliberate within these different groups that have some shared values on how to do that and, and uh, building go to another level of changing policy to enable the work that we're already doing to happen uh, you know, more effectively. Uh, so to that, in terms of the outcomes and next steps, uh, as we've tried to emphasize, I think, you know, we want this to be a very open process. We want to hear from everyone. And if this turns out to not be something of value, we want to know that if it's something that groups are skeptical of, if, if you or your organizations or other organizations attending say, well, no, there's something out there like that. But we hope that we are right, that we've hit on something that could be uh, useful. And in terms of that, what we're dedicated to do to follow up on this meeting um, is definitely to sum it up, try and pull out the different threads that we see, and make sure that's distributed to all of the people who attend and for the partners who maybe couldn't attend. Um, if there is some value that comes out of this and people want to keep organizing and thinking about issue working groups or maybe even regional groups, uh, we have staff time and administrative support we can dedicate to trying to help build that capacity or seek the resources to have that capacity and also just expanding our network and the reach of this. Um, sharing information and basically, like I said, to, to create this strategy on multiple levels that really gets all of us, you know, uh, as the saying goes, not necessarily on the same page, but all reading the same chapter. That where we can agree on things and we can all create the right momentum and if we need support at a local level that maybe some structures can be in place to help support certain momentum there. So you can go up and down the chain and uh, support what needs to be supported and time needs to be supported in. Um, so thinking about that strategically and bringing in the different groups and capacity to try and, and keep thinking about that. Uh, in the long term, uh, we're thinking of, sorry, I just had a thing pop up here. Uh, in the long term, uh, like I said, you know, we we have initiated this, but we don't want uh, to be seen, hopefully, as our process. We want this to be something that um, is of value and other groups participate in. And so to that extent, um, a, lot of, a lot of us are familiar with Via Campesina, and something I've talked about repeatedly is that Via Campesina has a model of sharing the, the leadership, that they physically relocated the leadership from Latin America to Indonesia and now to Africa. Um, with different groups. So thinking about building some structure, maybe not that exact structure, maybe something like that, where there can be leadership, uh, everyone's points get heard, everyone has a stake in it, and everyone feels like they've got an opportunity to uh, uh, really build that leadership and capacity with their own, within their own organizations as well as within this larger conversation. Uh, and so this all depends, this long term, on, on buy-in, and this being something that's useful, but de developing a multi-layered uh, approach where, again, like I said, we can support something from the local to the national, uh, even draw in perhaps international partners and definitely the international energy there is around in a lot of these things. And uh, basically, in the end, create uh, what's been called, you know, the seen as a movement of movement or a network of networks. We know there's, like I said, tons of stuff out there that's really great. We want to not recreate that, but to link it in a way that makes it all more effective. Uh, and so I think I will hand it back to Pete um, to bring us home here. Great. Thanks, Johnny. Um, so we are um, just wrapping up here with our side of things. So um, the meeting, the National Network meeting, as I mentioned, is uh, next Monday and Tuesday, 24th and 25th. So if you're registered, you'll be there with us. Uh, fantastic. If you uh, won't be able to make it, um, like Jackie mentioned, this is the start of a conversation rather than the, the end of a conversation. So we're looking for opportunities uh, and ways that we can continue building what comes out of the meeting next week and make that as accessible and engaging as possible in a lot of different ways so that people can participate on a level um, that's of interest and that is of use to them. So for those of, those that, for those of you who are coming along to the meeting, um, there's four things just to, to point out there before we open it up for uh, questions for the uh, for us, or feedback, or thoughts. Um, one is to just get ready we'll, uh, for the getting ready for Beyond the Farm Bill email that's going to be coming out this week. Um, that'll just have some final pieces of information about the meeting uh, and some updates on our agenda and our participant list. So keep your eyes on the email. That'll be useful if you're coming along. 
Uh, if you haven't already, complete the pre-meeting survey by tomorrow, which is March 20th, uh, and there's the URL there. Um, and the, that pre-meeting survey is a great way for us to get a sense of where you're coming from, what you think is important, so that we can get the conversation started uh, before um, or make sure that everyone's voice is heard in a lot of different ways. So please complete that survey. It is of use, and we will compile it and make sure that it's available to everyone uh, electronically as well as in hard copy at the meeting. You can always check out the Beyond the Farm Bill website at www.btfb.org. Um, that has some of the basic framework uh, and conversations that's already started and some resources. Um, and that'll also be a place that we'll start to make some of these resources that come out of our meeting available and continue that conversation. So that will uh, directly support our ongoing work. And of course, if you have any questions about the meeting, uh, you can always contact me with that email and the phone number there. I'll be happy to answer as many questions as I can. So thank you for uh, tuning in for that presentation. Uh, we do have some time left here, uh, about 10 minutes or so, that we can hear from you. So there, you should be able to raise your hand via your toolbar on the right. And by doing that, uh, you'll get in the queue or in the line for Catherine to uh, unmute your mic and you can have those conversations with us. Um, we, do have some, we do have a question that's come through. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll read out the question and then I can, uh, we can respond while we wait for more questions and comments to come through. So we did have uh, a question that came through from Patrick um, uh, and was interested about how we can connect the dots between uh, fence row to fence row, corn planting for ethanol, neonic coated GMCs, um, and um, uh, sorry, I'm just reading through this. Uh, Pollinate, looking at pollinator habitat and being, uh, these being a primary cause of colony collapse disorder. Um, so I can go ahead and handle that one, uh, not in specifics. Um, thank you, Patrick, for putting it in, and apologies for butchering your question. Um, uh, that, those are the kind of topic and policies um, that will come up, um, you know, that we'll have the forum for the Beyond the Farm Bill uh, meeting next week. Um, getting into those specific ideas about how do we deal with some of these challenging issues and the intersections that that issue or that topic might have um, with other particular areas that will be in the room, other people's viewpoints. Um, and the idea would be to start to develop those, um, you know, some agreements about how that issue touches on some of the other topics and principles that we'll be discussing. So um, it certainly will be something that will be talked about. Uh, we may not necessarily get into the nitty-gritty of how to fix it or how to solve it specifically, um, but we can start to build some relationships and some conversations uh, that might be able to on the long term. So um, definitely that kind of idea is something we'd love to have part of the, have a part of the meeting on Monday. I don't know. If then, Jahi, feel free to jump in if you have any other thoughts can, on can that. I yeah, yeah. So just uh, I briefly add, um, so I'm not sure uh, when we say connect the dots, but I think the question is connected for whom, for, for policymakers or uh, for farmers, for consumers. But um, I think to me the the potential power we have here is, is a lot of groups. And if we can, like I was saying, get on the same page to where the dots are connected for all of our organizations and constituents and using the same language, I think that's how you make policymakers accountable and they have to connect the dots is if they've got sort of a united front from a lot of different constituencies saying the same thing. Um, and beyond, you know, the very important uh, sort of email forward and sign-on support, that's an important tool, but even having that uh, united language beyond that and maybe some coordination beyond that within the groups, I think, will help. If we connect the dots among ourselves, that will help the policymakers connect the dots too. Yeah, that's fantastic. This is Pete again. I think just playing off what, uh, in response to what you, you, you asked Patrick, um, I think also what Jahi was saying is that um, that ability to have different groups raising these issues and seeing the connections that they have to their own particular areas of interest and work, um, that, just makes the, that just makes the argument or makes the approach that much more robust and that much more compelling uh, for those that are in the policymaking position. So harmonizing what Jahi said, and really that's the idea, is how can we take this idea of pollinator habitat um, and you know, recognize it and some of the po policy approaches that could be used, but then also how can it also be strengthened by some policy approaches in other areas um, that may be connected in with um, you know, looking at um, you know, worker, worker safety on farms and also looking at uh, protecting natural resources. How can we tie all those things together into a more comprehensive approach um, that's built on relationships? 
So if you have any other questions, we have time. We, we, we don't have any other questions in the queue right now. If you'd like to type yours in, you're more than welcome to, or you can raise your hand and Catherine will unmute you. Uh, if, when you're unmuted, um, you should be notified and you can just say your name and uh, share your thought or your question. So now's the chance. I, mean, I, I know this is Jai, and we, we um, are running short on time, but just uh, definitely want to encourage any comments. You know, if, if we've got it all wrong or we missed something entirely, you know, we want to hear that. We want to have the uncomfortable conversations because I think I'm, we think on the other side of that discomfort lies better understanding. So, if there's a question that seems out there, uh, definitely go for that too. Okay, well, it doesn't seem like we have a lot of uh, questions or uh, raised hands. Um, oh, we just had one pop through from Tom Pearson. Um, Tom made the note of that rural development isn't in the principles and what the, uh, what's the thinking with how that fits. So looking at rural development, how does that connect in with our principles and, and some of the, the long-term, uh, short long-term thinking? Um, ben, is that something that you'd like to, you'd like to hop onto and, and take a stab at? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, you know, I think you're right because uh, certainly issues around farmers is not uh, the only issue around rural development, and rural development is much broader than that. Um, I think there's a lot of crossover bes between some of these principles, but that may be something that we need to add and um, consider at the meeting. So that's a great point, and I think highlighting or identifying things that seem to be missing um, hopefully we can sort a lot of that out at the meeting, um, but we'll definitely take note of that. Thanks. And yeah, I would just encourage you, Tom, if there's, you're more than welcome to, to you know, uh, raise your hand, and if you'd like to share your thoughts now, you're more than welcome to do that uh, in your own words. Okay, I don't know if we have any other questions that are coming through or any other comments from those that are tuning in. Um, oh, Tom, is that, uh, do we have you uh, wanting to, to say a few words? Nope, I think we're having some audio problems. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up for today. Um, thank you all for the um, thank you all for your time and your your interest in this. And we're really appreciative of the fact that you took the time to to listen and uh, to our pre meeting webinar. And we're also looking forward to having you at the meeting next week if you are registered to attend. So again, if you uh, if you haven't uh, registered or if you haven't completed your survey. Uh, please follow up on those, and you can be in touch with me if you need some support in that. Um, and otherwise, we will end the webinar here. Um, and as Jahi mentioned, this will be recorded and distributed, so it will be something that you can uh, refer back to or pass along to others who might be interested. So thank you all again for your time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week.